Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Dr. Donna. Welcome to week 15 of nine. Last week, I read True Compass. Here's what I have for you. I am the youngest on my father's side. I have one sister and four cousins. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, growing up in an existence where everybody else is already set in place is very difficult to do. Now, on my mother's side, I am the second oldest, and that meant that I needed to be responsible and be the leader. So can you imagine being me? On one side, I'm the baby, and on the other side, I'm second in command. While I read True Compass, I understood Ted Kennedy. He was the youngest of nine, and everybody was already established. The Kennedy name was established. The men in his family were already established. And then all of a sudden, he went from being the baby to being the only male responsible for everything. Can you imagine what that feels like? I can. So as I read this book, of this person who spent the majority of his life in public service. I thought, how can you deal with so much? Being wealthy, having the name, being in politics, having so many people in your family die of so many awful, horrible ways to die, and then having to deal with your own issues in your own family, having to deal with a spouse that was an alcoholic, having to deal with your own addictions, having to deal with your children being sick, all in the public eye. And don't forget about having to deal with the loss of someone else's child while you were driving. Can you imagine that? Now, people had a lot to say about a lot, but here's what I'm going to say. I say everyone is a leader. I say everyone can be a real leader. And I want you to think about your own life and how many times you fell short and no one was there to see it and it wasn't in the public eye. And how many times have you succeeded and people were, like, were thinking, well, that's because, and they dismissed it. This was a person who was born into a family that didn't have a choice into the family that they were born. And so they used the cards that they were dealt to try to make a difference in the world to try to do something great with that name and with that money and with the influence within our government and really across the world. So I really enjoyed reading the book. It was also a lesson in history because of the time in which he lived and the access that he had to the presidents and the Congress and the Senate and everything else and around the world. So initially I thought, I don't want to read another Kennedy book. I don't want to read another book about a legislator and a public person. And it took me a minute to really read it. And honestly, it's 507 pages. So I was like, ugh, I don't want to listen to this and the tragedy. And you got to hear about it and then you got to have a feeling about it. But I am glad that I did read the book because I did get a lot of information. And it allowed me to have perspective, being the youngest and then being the second oldest. And as I've mentioned before, I literally have been in leadership since I was 14 years old. And I know what it feels like to be responsible and to have to take responsibility sometimes when it technically wasn't your responsibility. So as I sit here and think about the thing that I'd like to leave you with after reading this book, it actually is perseverance. It's at the end of the book where he talks about it and he says that, you know, you can do anything as long as you persevere. And then I thought about my own book, and I have a part in my book where I say perseverance. When you persevere during times of adversity, that's when you know what you're really made of. That's when you can really excel and be effective. So as I end this portion of the book review, I would like to leave you with something, and that is this. What happens when you fail? Do you persevere or do you sit down and just give up? And if the answer is you give up, you can't. Because you are here for a reason. Your life has a purpose and you have to persevere. When adversity strikes, you got to strike back. You have to leave a legacy and you have to be effective. You have to do something grand. Because whether you're an elected official or not, whether you're wealthy or prominent or not, you are here and you matter. You are valuable to the world and you have to do something that says that you were here and you mattered. Got it? Good. Do I recommend the book? Absolutely. Last week's New Beginnings, 
because I was inspired so much by the book, I have 74 principles of real leadership that are in my book. And I know them and I'm familiar with them, but I never took the time before last week to actually memorize them in the eight sections that they are in the book. And I thought this is a great time to do that. So just like I know Bible verses and the books in the Bible, this is apropos. So I've learned my 74 principles of real leadership and I have cards and I reference them because 74 principles is a lot to keep remembering. And I refer to them daily. And it was a great new beginning. And I found myself quoting things from the book even more because it is at the forefront of my mind. This week's book, the five dysfunctions of a team. Well, that's my time, ladies and gentlemen. But before I get out of here, just remember the power of nine. New beginnings expand your mind. Adios.